The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. The problem in today's Christendom, the pastor teachers were standing in the pulpits. They have forgot the duty of Second Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. That is the reason our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ proclaimed the same truth in John 4.48. Until and unless you see signs and miracles, you are not in a status quo to perceive and believe what is Christ. The man who came around to plead for the life of his son who was in high fever. Our Lord said to that person to whom who came, until and unless you see signs and miracles, you are not in a position to perceive, to believe that I am Messiah. The only problem that is happening today is purely by the pastor teachers who are not rightly dividing the word of truth, who are not going through proper exegesis, proper isogogics, proper categorization of the subjects through the dispensing technique of dispensation. That's why the people are tending again to signs and miracles. There could be no great sign than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in his first advent. There could be no great miracle than the completed canon of scripture in our hands. And we are failing to make the believers to have that perception idea so that they can believe upon the true Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone and not seeking and searching him for signs and miracles they have done long back they have been done away long back Apostle Paul why he was been given this authority of doing miracles so that he can establish his authority that he was been sent by God through Apostle Later on, when his own dear friend, who went not to care his own life to do the missionary work, when he was suffering, our Lord, our Lord and Savior, Lord God the Almighty, has written for us through the mentor minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that Apostle Paul prayed for his friend. He could not heal him again. That meant to say what? Ultimately, it is really the word of the Lord which should get you the true miracle, the true sign. The word of the Lord which shall make you to be occupied with Christ. It is not through miracles or healings or signs that you can get back. What do we learn? The sovereign power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when he does miracles or healings, which were been used temporarily before the completion of canon, was for some extension to prove that he was being sent by God as an establishment of authority. But right now, after the completion of canon, how does the pastor teacher prove his bona fide gift? By establishing his authority, by rightly dividing the word of truth. And in order to rightly divide the word of truth, you need to study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. There can be no greater work for a pastor teacher than to rightly divide the word of the truth, and particularly in this intensified stage of the angelic conflict, of this unique dispensation of the church age, every believer being termed out as Alec indicated it is the responsibility of a pastor teacher to thoroughly explain the polytheism of privileges and to show forth the unique spiritual life, to tell forth the dispensations followed by the mystery doctrine of the church age, so that each and every believer can orient to God's plan, so that they desire a great truth and Lord can grant them more grace, humble grace, in order to fulfill their desire. Once again, you go back to the oil business, you go back to the trunks crowd, you go back to the miracles work, and you say, your sorrow is no longer, your sorrow has been converted into joy. But how? Without doctrine, without having thorough inculcation to your soul, the learning of Bible doctrine, is it possible? 
What will you do if Lord gives you one more life? What will you do if Lord does a miracle of healing and heals you from your sicknesses? Again, will you not follow the same pattern of your old sin nature? When you are right, you are not able to look upon the word of the Lord. Lord caused you this sickness. You go for a faith healer and, mirac and, and, and miracle worker. And you get healed. What are you going to do? Trying to elevate the suffering of Lord so that you can come back and look and understand Bible doctrine. And give number one priority for Bible doctrine. Going against the plan of God. No, it's not, it has not to be like that. That's what our Lord said in John 4, 48. Why do you follow me for signs and miracles? Are you failing to perceive the truth, to believe upon me by my simple word? Now, how does the pastor teacher establish his authority? Why the miracles, healings, or tongues have been seized? The permanent canon of scripture tells to us, when you walk in the word of the Lord, Lord knows what miracle to do to you in your life as per the word, as per his righteousness, as per his demand that is requiring for you to be done. Living to walk in the word of the Lord, concentrating upon the miracles, will cause a great havoc, which has been done today in the Christendom. Exactly the same words which our Lord told to that one who came for his son's sake. We are not dealing with XYZ trends on this earth, dear brethren. We are dealing with solid doctrine. Pure, unadulterated doctrine. In fact, even Apostle Paul proved the point. It is no longer miracles or healings. For my own dear friend, Ephaphatiphus, I prayed so that he could be healed. I couldn't remove his sickness. I couldn't remove his diseases. Can't you learn the importance of doctrine? Because you need to establish the authority by teaching the word of the Lord, not by doing all such kind of stupidified things, because now the Bible has been completed, and we have been given the completed canon of Scripture, and the Bible tells you have the indwelling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and some morons will come and tell. Lord only told himself that we are going to do greater works than Lord. Then who are you to tell this? Yes, I know this. Our Lord meant for your old sin nature because you have been born in the old sin nature and Lord was out of the old sin nature and by the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit you can really master your old sin nature though it has been powered by Satan by breaking its sovereign power in Romans 6, 1-5. through 5. That is what our Lord meant. And you all are not interested to know these things, aren't you? If not a woman, she stands in the pulpit and she tells, I have a testimony for you to tell, because when this woman purchased blood, purchased some oil, that's what she says. Because of my miraculous crusade, she came. The healing testimony we are giving for you, listen, that's what this woman proclaims on the TV. And she wants to tell the girl she was suffering with her ministers for a long period of time because it couldn't get stopped so this girl she purchased oil from us and she went with the kerchief what we have given to her and she went and kept there and her bleeding got stopped and this is the testimony they want to give in the pulpits when lord has put you for suffering he knows why he has put you for suffering so that you can get back and realize the reality of the word because either by warning discipline or intense by discipline he wants to get you give and give you more grace he cannot evaluate the suffering for you by doing such kind of a miracles of healings now the only miracle will work for you because of the bible doctrine as you walk in the word of the lord that's what the miracle will happen to you when you have capacity when you have integrity when you have righteousness the true fellowship we can enjoy when we are walking in light says bible doctrine the true fellowship we can enjoy with lord god the holy spirit when we walk in his righteousness not trying to cover our unrighteousness with this moronical trend. That's what Lord told for us. Even in Peter, in his dying declaration, he tells the importance of the word. James, in his dying declaration, he tells the importance of the word. Jude makes aware to be aware of these false teachers. Apostle John tells for us the importance of Bible doctrine in Revelation 3.19. Lord is standing at your door and knocking. He wants to have fellowship with you. Come and dine with him. That is what having fellowship with the word of the Lord. How you can have the true word of the Lord fellowship? It is John 1, 1, through 3, 1 2, 3 and following. You can have this fellowship by learning the word of the Lord. Does not Deuteronomy 8 3 teach you long back the passage? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds from the mouth of Lord God Almighty. And you still want to enjoy, play gimmicks. It's your wish. It's your volition. 
They give this information for you so that you can correct your path and get back to maximum glorification for Christ. Because we want to use you, your assets, your privileges. Positionally, you are superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Experientially, you need to grow to that position. And it demands a daily, unadulterated discipline of learning in Bible doctrine. A strict academic discipline. Dear brethren, ponder over these things as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to be telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple believing Christ, you shall be saved. And whereas for the believer, the great merit is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, the daily intake of Bible doctrine will cause you to grow up so that the freedom core that has been given to you, you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free, the spiritual freedom. And whereas for the pastor teachers, the great merit is to inculcate Bible doctrine so that each and every step that you take, each and every move that you make, it has to be to the pleasing personality of Lord God Almighty to please Him. And that is what you need to go, you need to look and understand to Kheru Sotom Lagan. The dam out from my witnesses are indwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And the dam out from my witnesses, besides nature, it is Lord God the Holy Spirit. And besides Lord God the Holy Spirit, the entire angelic host, if there are no hearers for you to listen to your tapes, do not worry. It is Lord God Almighty to whom these tapes have to be given. He will give for them. But you need to worry only about one thing, not about the soft days, but about rightly dividing the word of truth by studying to show thyself approved unto God. We shall continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege and the grace that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will honor us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord. And we thank thee for the positive of privileges as well. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.